This is on 10th of September, Science, page 1291. The blood stem cell holy grail. What is holy grail? Anyone? Victoria? Think orange? No? You know what even by holy grail? Come on. Sugarland, come on. You can turn on the mic and oh. talk. Yeah, go ahead. How do you do that? Is that right? Yeah, right. press it and then, yeah, you get the green light on, that's your on. Press it again. Yeah, now talk. Okay, so it's supposed to be the the cup that Jesus uh, drank out of at the first, uh, la the last supper. Or it could be something else. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Have you seen uh, one of the... What is the, it? The oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. The one, the f there's the one movie they are on search of Holy Grail in yeah, different yeah. parts of oh, the thing about it. Yeah. But it is not like that, okay. <laughs> Here, the, the essence is uh, the Holy Grail that will give you the life, okay? So that is the major topic. Here... The blood stem cell holy grail, that's what they, they are talking about in, in this. So I would like to go through that article. Um, it's an interesting one. It is the latest one I want to discuss because we are going to discuss uh, about why we call it as a blood, as a holy grail here. So in our connective tissue three, that's our lecture topic today. The reason is um, here, there's a compound they call SR1 promotes the self-renewal of human hematopoietic stem cells in culture. This is the culture, cell culture, and this is the compound which will activate this. <coughs> SR1 is an antagonist of the aryl hydrocarbon receptor. Um, so this compound uh, initiates, you know, it gives the expansion of human hematopoietic stem cells in culture. Why do you need these hematopoietic cells? Hematopoietic cells are, uh, is a stem cells that will give rise to that organ which we desire. So in, in 20th century or 21st century, science has evolved in a sense that an adult stem cells we can use for a different purpose, like a, a therapeutical cloning and embryonic stem cells in one side and the adult stem cell is coming the next phase. But this compound which they have found in the hematopoietic stem cells, the multiplication in the culture, meaning you don't need, you know, in, in those days they have to give a donor and then recipient and transplantation, everything is going on for the organ transplantation uh, plantation as well as tissue tra transplantation. Instead, if you have a stem cells and then you can modify the stem cell and then you can make the desired uh, tissue and thereby you can repair the damaged tissue. So the stem cell, especially hematopoietic stem cells, means the stem cells are uh, is coming from the uh, blood heme, I mean hemo, you know, hemoglobin like that heme. So you got the blood is the one. Okay, the origin of those blood cells, okay, that has some stem cells. So if you have the stem cell, you can, you can uh, make it, you can tailor make certain type of organs and tissues and thereby you can repair that. Part. So in reality, we have to get these stem cells from a particular person. Donor may hesitate or you have to pay for thousands of dollars to get the donor hematopoietic stem cells and then do it. But instead, if you have a stem cells uh, from your tissue culture, from in vitro, and then you can make multiple cells of the hematopoietic stem cell, and then you can regrow on the desired organs. So it's a much more simpler process in vitro, and then you can transplant to the desired organ, or you can you can really make it in your industry. So that's what in next uh, another 10 to 10 years or so, you will get the companies. They will make your heart, kidney, and your liver and spleen and intestine, anything you want from this stem cell. That's what we are looking forward. You can also donate your own stem cell and then keep it ready, freeze it. Whenever you want it, you can order the company and they will make it for you. See, in that case, you need not worry about somebody is a donor and then spend some money at the later on. So this is the type of work which we are going to look into the future. So now we have to know about what is the blood and the system. 
So I'm going to give you is a connective tissue. In other words, they are, call it as, connecting lives okay so the connective tissue what we are talking about today it's uh, really the connecting the lives of one to the other so the the importance here is the liquid connective tissue so far what we have studied here is cartilage we have studied okay this is the liquid connective tissue connective tissue. This is, uh, we are going to start number three. Okay. Number two, what we have seen, this is the cartilage, is number one. And then bone, as a connective tissue, number two, which we have done last class, and this is the previous class we have done, and today we are going to talk about the liquid connective tissue, number three. Okay. So you are if you know the uh, science article and you, this connecting lives is uh, is a betterment i can say that's why they they said the holy grail holy grail again is uh, I mean, one of the uh, scriptures they say about the the god uh, gives life life is something related to god okay so people they have you know difference of opinion whether the god is there or not i'm not going to that argument yet but if you, everybody will agree, I am alive and I am, uh, I'm dead. So you, you, you don't be alive to see yourself dead, right? So if you are alive means, that means you have life. And that life is, in other words, you got the God or something like they are talking about the Holy Grail in, in, in this one. So you are donating the cells and the cells will make into the life. So that means it, it acts like a Holy Grail. And they found out the hematopoietic stem cell, which we are going to discuss at later part of the origin of blood cells today. Okay. Right. The I want to get through of the figures in your lecture five in a blackboard. Okay. So if you have got this uh, figures in your lecture, you can follow through. Um, all right. Here you can see the formation of circulating blood, which, which the origin is mesoderm. In fact, what happened on the second week of the embryo development, second week, you have got the uh, meso um layer and from that there are blood islands will be formed islands in the development of embryo so at that stage you get uh, you know the the origin of blood on the embryonic stage it will come up so it, it comes from as i mentioned here it is from the mesoderm that gives rise to blood and this blood will give specialized connective tissue. That's what we are talking about today. And this uh, this will connect. What it will connect in plasma, we find the blood is composed of erythrocytes, then RBC, and leukocyte or WBC, and chylomicrons, where you have a fat uh, cells, not not adipose tissue, but the fat which is in or, or fatty acids forming a droplets of fat. If you find oil in water, what will happen? The oil in water became a droplets. It won't miss it, right? Like that, the fatty acid in the blood, okay? It forms like a droplets. We call it as a tiny, small piece of a, a bubble-like thing where encapsulating the fatty acid. That's called chylomicrons. And then thrombocytes, and that's uh, mainly of uh, platelets, which is uh, which produce of more of thrombin, and that uh, helps in clotting factors, everything. So this, uh, this, everything is coming from the mesoderm and it starts from the second week of gestation or the embryonic stage of the, um, of the second week. That you should remember. And then, what I'll go back onto the lecture part. Let me get if I get into that.
just getting into the link. If it is there, then otherwise I'll go into that one. Okay, that's not coming up yet. So I'll go through it here. So fluid connective tissue. Okay. Fluid connective tissue. Could you hear from Victoria? Could you see? Blood, lymph, and hemopiasis. The hemopiasis is the one where the blood cells are formed, okay, the method or the ways. The objective of this lecture mainly on the life history of each blood cell. So the blood is not like a one liquid, but it contains a different cells, and we are going to study the different types of cells and the history, origin, distribution, functions, lifespan, and the eventual fates because sometime I will rush through all this, but you are going to study from the PowerPoint that will get through your uh, practice quizzes, okay, and then that will get into your exam too. So, they differentiate the various leukocytes by morphology, how the cells are looks like. Leukocytes, leuco means, um, you know, like a white, that there's no color there, so it's a like a leukoderma where there no pigment is there. So leukocytes is the white blood cells. Then the morphology of white blood cells, there are different types of white cells. We are going to study the leukocytes. And number in circulation, that determine the, you know, the factor of the, any disease or any other infection, what's going on there, okay? And the adaptation of erythrocytes for gas carriers, that we will see that one. Why do we uh, study the gas carriers? As I mentioned earlier, the RBC, they have a function they, what gas carrier, what type of gas we have to have in, in yet? In oxygen and carbon dioxide, right? So we don't know, in any other planets, we may have different types of carriers, gas and anything like that. We don't know yet, right? So here we will see, uh, we have the erythrocyte is adapted, RBC is adapted to have only the gas carriers. If this RBC Will will get uh, uh, any other function? What will it do? Suppose it multiply and it will do um, uh, fighting in a disease of bacterial or pathogen with the RBC. What will happen to that? It will not carry or the amount of oxygen that carries will be diminished because the function is diverter. So our body is an excellent model of division of labor. Okay. If you have more of a, of a, of a RBC, then that means it carries is good, okay? And, and the oxygen, and then uh, carbon dioxide, that should be eliminated out of our body. So the gas carrier plays a major role, and it should do one at a time, one function at a time, okay? If a person is uh, now in, in modern society, we have to multitask and, and then multi uh, talented and then for the job applications and everything. But at the same time, you have to do one job at a time. You won't allow the government or any other uh, job agency, they won't allow any other job to do, you know, you can't carry out. What will happen if a person is doing a three jobs, morning, morning uh, four o'clock to one, uh, you know, uh, 12 o'clock and then 12 to eight and then eight to another uh, part-time job or another four hours or so. So his efficiency, what, what happened to the efficiency? Will be decreased. When you do, if he's doing a one job and then he's calling another call for the second job and he has to compromise that and then all in a sudden he has to take care of his family and everything. So it is, it is going to be a big mess. So you one at a time. So our body is a wonderful uh, example of uh, one cell at a time. One cell will do one function. Here the RBC, there's no nucleus. If you say nucleus in the RBC, that is you are wrong. Yes, you will get a nucleus at the embryonic stage, at the time when the RBC has been developmental stage. It is there. Uh, if you find nucleus in RBC in adult, that is the blood cancer. So you should not get that fetal development of RBC in, in the adulthood. So if you happen to have that, that is wrong. Okay, you should not see any nucleus in adult erythrocyte or RBC. So it should do on carrier gas function, and we will see how the gas is being transported or carried in. Comparative physiology class, have you done human physiology, comparative physiology class? You must have known about how the mechanisms involved in, in the oxygen uh, transport and carbon dioxide transport in hemoglobin, okay. Terminology, we are going to study hematocrit, uh, anemia, leukocytosis, and leukopenia. These are some of the uh, diagnostic features of connective tissue. 
we have never seen earlier the connective tissue 1 or 2 as a diagnostic feature unless otherwise you have to get a biopsy of cartilage or bone and then study the effect. But here we are going to see a drop of blood. Have you seen a drop of blood on to the glass slides and then looks into that what type of how many cells and everything have you done before in your any other hospital visits? Yes? In the lab, we are going to do, all of you in, in histology lab, uh, you are going to do your blood profile, uh, blood uh, group, and then uh, blood cell or white blood cells and everything, you are going to do it. So, let us see how you are, you are healthy and everything, okay. It's your, you are, you are not going to consult with any other doctor. You do it, your blood cells and then keep it with yourself, okay. Okay, role of T and B cells, and if you are taking immunology, you know about the role of T cells and B cells, and that's what the origin and fine structure, and that is going to be in, in the blood. And then comparison of lymph and blood. What is the lymphatics or lymph fluid? It's also an interstitial fluid, because blood which is following through the blood capillaries, blood vessels, and the heart. Do we have a lymph heart for the lymphatic system? This not, but there are some lymph ducts. There, the, there, are, there are in in a thoracic and some region. It is not like a heart, but the interstitial fluid. That the fluid which is flowing in between the cells, in between the tissues, that carries some message. That is also we call it as a circulatory system and the circulation. The lymph, L Y M P H, lymph. Okay. So, it carries mainly um, when the absorption of fat and fatty acid from the intestine which is taking place and that is mainly going into the lymphatics, lymph. Whereas, the glucose and amino acid that will absorb getting into the blood capillaries. So, the lymph play a major role where lymph like, like, a, like a drainage, if there is a, any infection is going on in between the cells, uh, I mean the, the bacteria or viral or toxin which will invade the tissue, at that time what happened, you have uh, got the white blood cell or, or, or the uh, you know, macrophage or phagocytosis which will occur, which everything occur in the tissue. When the tissue, when the fighting going on between bacterial pathogen and the white cells and there is some destruction of the tissues. That should be carried away, not by blood, by lymphatics. And thereby the lymphatics will have large amount of the number of the organisms, like a, like, like a particle, like a viral or toxin and everything. And then the lymph node becomes swelling at the time of infection. If you go for a flu or any other symptoms or, the, or, or, or infection, go to the doctor and the doctor will do what? He will, he will touch your lymph node which is present on your neck. Under the neck, have you ever seen doctor touching your neck and then you can find out any swelling is there or not. That's the first and foremost symptom which he can feel if the lymph node is swelling. If there is a swelling, then you can confirm, okay, you got some infections going on through that. So that's the lymphatics and lymph node, that's the purpose of the lymph and lymph node which will carry the pathogenic or the destruction of the tissues in that node, okay. We'll see that one in the uh, quite a bit of the blood, a typical specialized type of loose irregular connective tissue derived from mesoderm. So, you may get a question like this, like what is the blood, is the, is the regular or irregular, loose or rigid? Is that connective tissue either mesoderm or ectoderm or endoderm? You have to substantiate your answer. Blood is a loose connective tissue, regular connective tissue, and it's derived from mesoderm. So the ground substance is fluid. That is the plasma. You compare the previous connective tissues. What is the con previous connective tissue? One, it's a cartilage. What is the ground substance there? The ground substance is mainly of matrix that's on glycosaminoglycan is a solid right that it's not a liquid it's a solid that's a glycosaminoglycan and matrix uh, in um, in the bone what is the ground substance in the bone it's a mainly of the calcium phosphate as a matrix it's a rigid bone in that one okay so in in connective tissue 2 uh, we found the ground substance is a fluid here, maybe plasma. Why? This ground substance is flowing through, throughout the body, distributing the nutrients, distributing the gases and distributing 
all the other vitamins, all the necessary nutrients throughout the body as well as collecting the bad stuff, collecting the toxic, collecting the uh, gas from carbon dioxide, nitrogenous waste and back to the excretory organ, either skin or it can carry to the lung to eliminate the carbon dioxide or going to the kidney. Okay, so all of those functions done by the uh, liquid connective tissue. So this um, substance, ground substance, plays a major role when compared to connective tissue one as a cartilage, as well as connective tissue two as a bone. So it plays a major role in connective tissue three, that is in blood. The cells we find is erythrocytes and leukocytes, but non-cellular blood platelets. What is a non-cellular blood platelets? are thrombocytes as well as the chylomicron. What do you mean by non-cellular in this one? Here the non-cellular is, it is not like a like a cell and its function, but it will, the platelet it, 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 it has are the thrombocytes, they have certain specific functions here. Unlike erythrocytes, it has the different functions like a chylomicron is just like a blood, uh, uh, as a fatty acid droplets, and the thrombocytes is a, is a, is a is a substance or the cells or the platelets that will synthesize uh, mainly of thrombin. Okay, that gives like a like a fiber. Th thrombin is like a fiber, and that will give you blood clotting. When you when you have the blood is coming out of your capillaries when you have an injury in the skin, immediately what will happen after a few minutes if you suck the blood into your mouth and then after that what will happen? It's, it's not flowing out unless otherwise you suffer from hemophilia or something else. But normal human beings, you get a blood clot, right? It's like a fiber ne a network which is be formed. That is mainly done by these platelets, okay? And then the thrombocytes, that will do that one. And then we have the other uh, defense mechanism are immunoglobulin, specific protein immunoglobulin. You have studied in your immunology class like a immunoglobulin, how many types of immunoglobulin you have studied? IgG1, IgG2, IgG3, IgG4, IgG5, like a different types of immunoglobulin you have studied. Okay, all of them are present in the blood now. Blood, it's a how much blood we have, how much blood you can donate. How many of you donated your blood so far? One, two, three, four, five. Anyone from Victoria? Blood donors? One, two, three, four, five, good. Cinco Ranch? How many? Okay. One, one two, four. Okay, one. That's one. Okay, good, 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 good. So, how many of you received blood? One. Anyone? There in Victoria? Recipient of blood. Cinco Ranch? No. Okay. It will be fine. The, the thing is um, the donor as well as the recipient, those are blessed beings, right? Because they, are, they have uh, giving the thing. Always when you give something and you have satisfaction, those who are the givers, they know very well about it. Not for money also, it is some sort of satisfaction. As well as if you give your own blood to somebody, you have a much more satisfaction in your mind and then your heart is so good, really. So that's fine. But how much you can donate? We have only five liters. How much we can donate? One liter? Half, half a liter? A uh, one point. Point is uh, around 250. Around this comfortable, 250 to 500 is comfortable range on that one, okay? So that's a, because we have five liters of blood in a constant circulation. So it should be maintained, okay? collects an oxygen from lungs and nutrients from intestine and supply throughout the body and hormone secretion into blood and for the distribution and desirable waste products that remove. That's what we discussed earlier. So these are mainly function of blood now. Okay. Other functions are the protections, pathogenic agents, control of body temperature, maintain acid-base balance and fluid balance between the cells. This is very important, acid-base balance and fluid balance between cells. During surgery, you are likely to lose more of blood. At the time, they have to infuse the blood as well as to keep the balance, the fluid balance under the control of five liters of the circulating blood circulation. So if you lose more blood or fluid balance, in, so that's why they are giving a dripping with a saline, you know, so that's a keep the body fluid balance is good. 
if it is not then you are you are likely to get into this as you are you are messing around with the acid base balance on in your tissues and that will change the temperature as well as uh, you know you get uh, uh, undesirable side effects to the body okay so the, the clinical diagnostic tool this is this is very very important on on, on to the biologist as well as the uh, as the money making uh, health industries i put it that way because that you don't need to do some blood test but unnecessarily they want to do the blood test so make uh, the companies happy people employed and 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 your your insurance company will pay not you so it's everyone is a win win situation in that case but this one they are making a lot of things that's why it's a clinical diagnostic tool there's no need to do any blood test but they they ask you to do it that's what i said so due to which your circulation the influence well being virtually every cell which is being communicated with the blood that you should understand clearly every cell in your body which is communicate with the blood circulation if anything goes wrong even one particular cell a group of cell a tissue that reflects in the blood circulation if anything goes wrong some toxic or some infection or anything the cell is not behaving properly is improper behavior of the cell what will happen if they do the neighboring cells hate that particular cell hey i don't like you you are not you you are acting differently they push they won't talk to them that meaning that those cell to cell communication they eliminate like a social uh what is called social antagonist or something anti social elements like that particular cells and that will come out where that cell will go either interstitial fluid getting into the lymph or getting into the blood and the once it get into the blood and if you get a small a drop of blood you can you can identify that particular culprit there so that's why it's a diagnostics and investigations and everything it depends upon that blood that standing exposed to air lead to clot and trapping jelly like mass i mean that's the blood clot that you know about details the clear stracular fluid that remains in serum which differ plasma being free of fibrin i mean you should know what is the difference between uh, uh, blood uh, plasma and the blood serum that's very important <laughs> into your your understanding okay okay we have a blood it has the fibrin otherwise we get a clot the clot formation mainly due to this fibrin okay here so when you take a blood and then you are spin down right you are spinning down or you just keep the blood uh you know for for a while maybe just just in a in a in a in, in a tube test tube only the test tube and then you draw blood and keep it for 25 to 40 minutes what you get a clot formed like this a clot is formed and then rest of the serum it looks like a like an yellow color a straw yellow color that is called serum okay this is one part the clot is due to the fibrin when you expose the blood onto the air because you are keeping the blood test tube outside the air normal air so the air as well as the oxygen and 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 then the fibrin which is present inside the blood will become slowly getting into the clotting and then all all are accumulating in one side it settles on one side and then you leave the serum as a fluid yellow color fluid that is called serum So serum is devoid of I put serum is devoid of fibrin serum is devoid of fibrin there is no fibrin in that so the next part is if you collect blood in anti coagulant like a oxalate oxalated blood okay or or sodium fluoride sodium fluoride i put sof sodium fluoride 
So when you collect the blood, you you get the clot. This is an antifibrin, okay? So and and then there is no clot formation, no clotting, no blood clot, because you are adding the oxalate and the sodium fluoride, and and it won't it won't clot the blood. Or or in other words, they used to have a heparin, heparinized syringe or heparinized uh, blood collection, where you get a homogeneous. There is no clot. Meaning, all this solution or this blood, whatever you collected in the test tube, is with fibrin. So no, no clot is formed. And this one, when you when you centrifuge, spin down, spin, okay, low spin, not higher spin. Maybe you can go for 700 to 800 g. That is the speed in you know, a centrifugal force. You have used centrifuge in your in your lab, so if you have the low spin, what you get, you get the cells, you get the cells which is settling down, and then you get the all, here you get the RBC, and um, sometimes in a large amount of the uh, WBC also will come up, some of them is getting in, and then you have a, here also, you get a, a clear, like a pale, I put a pale, yellow, not like a striola, pale, yellow liquid, and this is called plasma, blood plasma. So this blood plasma will have fibrin, okay, after centrifugations. So if I ask a question, what is the difference between what is the difference between blood serum and blood plasma you should always remember plasma contains fibrin and serum contains no fibrin because the clot is formed okay so that's the one part which i want you to remember and let's go on to the next one the clear straw color fluid that remains in serum which is different from plasma being fibrin. So that's that that's what which I explained to you now you should know. Anticoagulant, you can have uh, these are the heparin, prevent the blood clotting. On centrifugation, they get a three layers, and the layer you have a plasma, 50% of the column, one percent of the column is the buffy coat, that the leukocyte and platelets, RBC the hematocrites. And then if you have the RBC below 30 percent is anemia, above 60 percent is polycythemia. So this is too many RBC. So this is a diagnostic feature. Just get a, a drop of few milliliter of your blood and if you centrifuge and then you get the percentage of uh, this RBC packing, they call it as a, how many of you have worked as a uh, medical laboratory technologist here? Victoria, anyone is working? now uh, worked before earlier medical laboratory technologist no synco range no any medical laboratory no okay this is the right time you learn this and you will get a job okay so this is this is very good uh, uh, technique which we will we will get through in in some other lab okay it's an interesting one here and plasma slightly alkaline fluid transporting solvent the oxygen. See, in, in these are the characteristic dissolved and protein, albumin, and everything which we have uh, we have gone through earlier. Um, sometimes the blood transfusion occur because that's a very big industry, blood transfusion. RBC they won't give you know because they have some sort of a compatibility match. In some occasion they transfuse plasma, just plasma. There is no RBC in that one. Okay, so they will just transfusion the use of plasma. So these are constitutional plasma and blood cells. We have studied by erythrocyte or RBC, and then uh, functions. We have done this is very simple, but they they don't have a protein synthesis capacity. The RBC. Okay, they have. Iron containing protein hemoglobin that carries the gases. Okay. 
So they enucleate. Enucleate means the RBC, they have uh, no nucleus. The erythroplastid is appropriate than erythrocyte. But erythrocyte, they normally do. E site means cell. The, the cell, RBC, red blood cell, they don't have a nucleus. That's very important to remember, okay. And erythrocytes continue. How much? Here, yeah, the shape of the RBC is round, biconcave. I'll go through the figures in a, quite a little bit. And these are the size of the RBC and they fixed and stains and, and, and then you are going to see in your lab uh, RBC. Um, how many have you seen RBC, your own RBC earlier? No? No slide preparations or anything? Have you done? You haven't done it yet in Seco Ranch or in Victoria? Have you done your own RBC? No? Are you there? No, you haven't done it yet. Okay. Okay. The cell membrane is flexible, the cell membrane, the RBC. So in the pathological situation, the sickle cell anemia, self-distorted, bizarre shape and resembling like a sickle. Okay. So that part is uh, an interesting one where the Red blood cells looks like a, like a donut, right? It goes like this, and then this is so on. And then. See, it's a. It's here you have a convex surface, and then here in the middle you have a depression, a concave. So in this, uh, it's highly flexible. This is one RBC I'm drawing it. Okay, this is a normal RBC. But when this RBC or red blood cells. Uh, in a sickle cell anemia, it's a, a sex-linked trait where you get this it will go like this or sometimes like this it goes like a like a moon, you know. So this is one RBC. When this has been transferred to like this, that is real bad. The situation where you get uh, the oxygen carrying capacity is being diminished in this situation, sickle cell anemic, right? So when you see under the microscope of RBC, it looks like this, it will all, all the cells like this, it goes like this, instead of, instead of like this, so if you see the microscope figure, instead of round, 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 you get like this, a small sickle, okay? So that's the diagnostic feature and uh, we we'll see in, a, in the picture. Some other abnormal situation, the shape is anisocytosis, unequal, larger than 9 micrometer in macrocytes. Okay. It's so on. Number of RBC in circulation, 5 to 5.5 millions per liter blood in men. In women, 4.5 to 5 millions per liter of women. So both, if you have an average, I can just call it as a 5 millions per liter of blood. So how, my, how much, uh, uh, content how many liters we have? 5 liters. So 5 liters, then total how much we have? 5 times 5? 25, approximately 25 millions of red cells. It's a chronic exposure to high altitude. If you go in a high altitude, like go to Himalaya or some other Alps or mountain here, um, you know, Colorado, you know, mile high city, Colorado, right? We go and live there. Or if you expose to more of the carbon dioxide, then you have the increase the total amount of blood volume. So the number of RBC to 9 to 10 million per liter. Why? What is the reason for that? Because when you go high and high and high, high, higher altitude, you are giving a stress. The amount of oxygen is going to be less. So your body should go against um, yeah, sort of a homeostasis to increase or to cope up the increased stress of the demand of oxygen. It will start synthesizing our hypoxemia, hypoxic state, where hypo means low, so oxygen is low, so hypoxic state are the less oxygen tension, or less, less oxygen pressure, or partial pressure of oxygen is diminished, or number of oxygen molecule is reduced when you go on a travel in high. 
So at that time, you get the RBC production will be more because you have your body need 5 million. So imagine the 5 million of RBC require the oxygen binding capacity and that oxygen should distribute to the tissues. If that particular amount of oxygen is reduced, you the body feels hey, there is no oxygen, it, mean, it means that we need to produce more of RBC, more of red cells. So if you have more red cell, it, it assumes that it can take more of oxygen and distribute to the tissues. But it is not the case. You have a constant amount which is present in that. So our body is coping with that stress. So it induces more amount of RBC. That leads to 9 to 10 million of RBC per liter in those people, those people who are living in, in, in higher altitude are they exposed to carbon monoxide poisoning. But they will die eventually, but if you have or excess of carbon dioxide, where the oxygen available, I put it in that way, oxygen availability is low. If that is a stress to your body, your body assumes that it should produce more of RBC to increase the oxygen uptake and thereby it increases the production of RBC in our body. So there is a mechanism of the stress. So in, if you think the people who are going into space or microgravity environment, what will happen if the oxygen tension is low up in there? Or the person who is an astronaut who is traveling or living in a, in a space shuttle, what will happen in the RBC? Do you think that RBC will, will be the same or 5 million or it will be going up? If, if the oxygen is more, it's going to be less. Okay. But in a high altitude, and uh, if they have uh, the oxygen tank, whatever they are doing it there, if there is something going on, then they, they may survive with the less oxygen, but their RBC level will go up. You know, so, oh. so that's one of the diagnostic features. And they have all the blood uh, monitoring things in, in space. They are getting small spectrophotometer and all they're taking the blood and they are, they are doing it. They are doing some work on that microgravity environment there. That's good. Thank you. So the next one is lifespan of RBC. How long this RBC can live or survive? 120 days in normal individual, that is in the 2.5 million RBC lost per second. So every second, we are losing 2.5 million RBC. We are losing it. We are destroying it. And the same number is renew the cells. So how fast it is? Yes? So the, the increased amount of cells means it gives the, even the slightest stress into the system it might increase the RBC, the uh, number of RBC here. So it lives only 120 days, maybe like four, four months, is that right? Right? RBC, and after that it's being destroyed. So uh, this second uh, 100, uh, 2.5 million RBC is lost means that survive for maybe four, four months. So now it's a renewal is going on. So how much the destruction as well as the you know synthesis synthesis as well as the uh, you know um, the destruction of RBC which is happening with the per, per day so that's why we have to have um, sort of uh, like uh, the breathing exercise have you ever heard of the breathing exercise relax and yoga and other things on you know so that really helps in a way you are going to take breath heavily like more of exercise, you are you are doing your your lung uh, function as well as you are breathing more oxygen and keep that oxygen yeah oxygenated yeah for a while in your lungs, not <sighs> breathe and then you are expel the air out. But you are have to keep it for a while for a few seconds at least. So when you do those exercise, you are keeping them so that the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange will take place easily, and there you will get enough oxygen throughout the body. That's one of the reason. If you have uh, more, if you have suffering from anemic, you don't have this much millions of RBC. Mind it. Okay. Senile cells are destroyed by phagocytosis in liver. Where it, where the cells will destroy it in the liver as well as in the bone marrow, 
and most of them are phagocytosis as well as in the in the graveyard where right? the spleen is the graveyard of rbc one of the questions is there in your in your practice quizzes as well where the rbc is being destroyed in your body okay so you have to say that it is being destroyed in spleen okay in spleen what happened hemoglobin is degraded and released into iron and returned to bone marrow for the production of new hemoglobin so it is an excellent recycling mechanism going on we are not doing that much recycling we we are very lazy and we don't do that but uh, but our our system our cells our blood our rbc they do a very good excellent job here released into release iron the iron is the one which is the necessary material raw material for making the rbc that is being uh, renewed okay recycled back into the hemoglobin okay into the bone marrow so non ferrous hemoglobin the transport liver where it is converted to bile pigment bilirubin which is excreted in bile so the bile pigment and bilirubin which is the excreted product of rbc why i'm saying this if there is uh, excess of bile pigment which is present in your in your blood circulation what will happen excess of bilirubin or bile pigments bile pigments and it leaks uh, like when you getting into the uh, blood and you get some yellow color so in in case of hemolytic jaundice jaundice you know where the hemolysis which is occurring excessively if you have a hemolysis means your blood cell rbc is lysed excessively in your blood there's a indicator where the excess of uh, bilirubin which is present in getting into the blood circulation and become liver and liver to the bile and bile bile pigments and getting into the into the intestine that's fine but in some other jaundice like obstructive jaundice or infective jaundice or your hemolytic jaundice all this jaundice means you have got the yellow color in your eye into a sweat and to your urine and to the feces feces must be less into the excretion product where may you may get to combined with the uh, uh, the ferric material and then you get some sort of a a uh, bluish stool which you will get it when you go on to the excretion product in the feces so this is a hepatitis a injection have you got the hepatitis a b c you know all these vaccination you have done that right so those are the infection of viral infection which is pretty much getting into the liver so the liver is being damaged and liver damage you won't get the bile sac bile secret bile bilirubin or bile pigment they be excessively loaded onto the blood and also in obstructive jaundice where the bile pigment and bilirubin cannot get into intestine okay the bile duct is blocked by bile stone so for example bile stone is uh, is a worst uh, acute pain when you get the bile stone obstruction and stomach pain of your abdomen so they have to do immediate surgery is necessary for that so they will remove the bile duct or the bile you know so the passage of bile is uh, bile stone is been uh, obstruct to it that form the obstructive jaundice are you getting the it's not an infection but it's an obstruction of the bile flow and that back shuttle back onto the blood and you get more of the pigment so when you get the bile pigment in the blood and that that is an indicator and that is another way of doing a clinical diagnosis for the obstructive jaundice okay this is the excretion in bile that's so we have to remember that the pigment rbc rbc is broken down the waste product or the recycling product form a, a, a sort of a diagnostic tool for the obstructive jaundice or hemolytic jaundice or the infection or any liver disorder i put it that way okay rbc in fresh blood spreads on the cells often stick together these are some of the characteristic of uh, of the rbc when you place it in a hypotonic city the the burst because of the osmosis it may burst but when you go on hypertonic it lose water and shrink that called crenation we'll see some of the interesting pictures when i posted in the blackboard you can go through those figures sometimes i'll ask some questions from this which is a hypertonicity or hypotonicity everything on your exam so the electron microscopy 
you can see the different um, level of RBC. You can see the reticulocytes, where the immature RBC reticulocytes, uh, I mean, these are some of the staining procedure, which we may also do it in our lab, you know. In anemia patients, an elevation count indicates that RBC production is increasing due to the treatment. So these are some of the diagnostic features where we can monitor whether the RBC production is low or high using the histological staining. Okay, that's why I want to link the lecture part as well as to the um, to the lab portion. Leukocytes, otherwise we call it a WBC or white blood cells. There's no pigment that's uh, and also colorless in fresh state. Okay, the true cells, these are some other uh, uh, features arise from red bone marrow cells and the lymphoid tissues. After maturation, it's entered into blood. If it entered into the blood immaturely, for a case, say, the, the lymphoid tissue, the blood cells or the white blood cell should appear in the blood on a mature cell. In case, if it appear in an immature state, then you can suspect that patient is suffering from leukemia. Okay. So if the blood cancer, you will get that immature white blood cells appearing in the blood. So that's another uh, diagnostic feature. And then the function mainly of phagocytosis and immune reaction, wound repair and re infections and everything that's going on. And we did study some of the ratios. Uh, it is less than RBC, but, but the ratio is 1 is to 600, and then 5,000 to 9,000 per liter for blood for women and for men, 6,000 to 10,000. The count rises rapidly in acute infection count, 12,000 leukocytosis. Okay. That's a, another condition, okay, infection. And here, just I want to mention why there's a difference here, 5,000, 9,000, 6,000 to 10,000 liters. So, in average, if you say um, men, they have more than women. Why? Anyone? Yeah, no. No, when they actually, I mean, just it's a, it's a thing like the people they used to say when and the man and the women is made from the rib of a, of a, Man, when the Adam and Eve have been created in the creation topic at that time, okay. So I th I think this is a, one of uh, the the joke they used to say, like uh, when Adam and Eve were there, and then they said I then Adam was saying to the Eve, I I, I loved so much then, then I, I I I saw someone beautiful in somewhere, you know, she, then she got jealous and then she started counting his rib again, you know thought that God is made another woman <laughs> against to you. <laughs> That's why he, she thought and then she was getting into counting his rib again. Okay, he got all the ribs over there. <laughs> it's not, he's not losing any other rib now, ribs from you. So that's the, uh, that's the way they used to say it. But you know, why I'm saying this, that rib are the bone again, right? From the bone, if that is true, when the blood coming from that, you know, is getting on the bone marrow cells and everything, that are uh, um, the potent, pluripotent cells. So you can create a human being from the blood cell. The mythology, they also said, when, when, when the bad guy is being killed by the good person, then he got a drop, a lot of blood. So each drop of blood, he is, uh, a person is being, yeah, each cell will produce a human being. So that's not a mythology, but uh, it, it may be true when, when now is the science is coming up, now it's a cloning part of the thing. Okay, well, I'll give you a break now. You go back and come another 10 minutes. We will have again. Okay? Any question? Any question? Victoria? Cinco? No? Okay.
Dr. Soma? Go ahead. Um, I came in late. Okay, I guess I marked you. That's a late. Okay, good. You can tell who it is by the voice.
Okay. Are you back from Victoria? Ready? Cinco? We're here. All right, great. Okay, we will have a blood cell count. Uh, this is the normal uh, way they do the diagnostic feature. So you have to have uh, neutrophils. These are white cells, different types of white cells. So how much percentage that gives a diagnostic feature? This is for 55 to 70 percent is a neutrophil, good. Eosinophils 1 to 4 percent is good. Basophils 0 0.5 to 1 percent and lymphocytes 25 to 40 percent and monocytes 2 to 8 percent. So this percentage they normally do with a, with a cell counter when you get a drop of blood and they dilute and they will mm, count under the microscope and now there are different uh, uh, modern equipment where it will count automatically about these cells. So, we will count these cells in the lab as well, here. In, I will ask you to draw a drop of blood and then count them up. So, we will we'll do it in the lab. So, we can calculate the percentage as well. Um, if the neutrophils uh, level which is lower down and uh, that is again, uh, you know, or the blood level because some uh, injury or to surgical things like neutrophils will be migrated and it is not being synthesized in, in proper time, then you have a less amount and that is uh, again you know, PMN cells, lack of that's on immunological disorders, yes. And eosinophils, it comes one during the infection, especially some worm infection, um, have you ever heard of the hookworm infection? Sometimes it's coming from the meat and uh, they have the cyst and when you eat uncooked meat, you get the uh, hookworm infection onto the small intestine as well as the tinea, uh, that's another infection which is uh, getting on the small intestine. And that uh, leads to higher eosinophil counts in blood, meaning if uh, an infection is going on, then uh, what you get is um, the uh, uh, stress or uh, the immune system will think I have to fight more of this infection of antigen, so we need to produce more of the eosinophil. So that goes to as eosinophilia, some allergic response. How many have you ever heard of eosinophilia? But the eosinophilia, some, sometimes the pollen allergic and everything they got sneezing quite a while and they got an infection and if they count on more than uh, four percent maybe eight or ten percent then the eosinophil count that make uh, make uh, worse you know eosinophil counts more means that you have infection either by allergy or any other uh, tinea uh, or the hookworm infection in your intestine because in hookworm it is asymptomatic you won't feel uh, anything like, but the infection is in your intestine unless otherwise if you count the eosinophil count with more than uh, 4 percent then you will get it. So, so this is a diagnostic feature of this. As well as the lymphocytes and their counts make sure that the immune system is working well, that the T lymphocyte and then a B lymphocyte and then helper cells and, and the natural killer cells and all of them coming under the category of the lymphocytes. Um, in some type of tumor, you get this uh, lymphocytes uh, level we need to increase. For example, in natural killer cells, the natural killer cells, a type of lymphocytes will go and get the cancer cell and destroy the cancer cells. So in uh, probably 1985 or 
eight, no, 80, yeah, around 1980s, middle of 1980s, people thought that if you provide more of natural killer cells to our cancer patient, these cells will go and destroy the cancer cell, not the normal cells, and thereby they can cure the cancer. That's our concept. But even then, you know, that also works well, but that is not a complete cure for cancer. So that also works even now, that's on lymphocytes. Okay, differential leukocyte count, we call DLC. So these are the different conditions where the diagnosis is the appendicitis, neutrophil, you present is 85% into blood. And parasitic infections is 30 to 50% instead of 1 to 4%. Imagine the parasitic infection like a hookworm. And, and then your flatworm, so you get the eosinophil counts is higher. So just make sure have a drop of blood, you can diagnose for this, for all these infections, okay? And then classification, there are two types of classification, granular leukocytes and agranular or non-granular leukocytes. So here the uh, no lobulation or nucleus mononuclear, this is agranular, a granular is more than one lobe of nucleus, that's what we call the granular type. Classifications and granulocytes, uh, you got the three types, eosinophils, basophils, neutrophils, and there are some of the uh, histological staining and how to differentiate in the microscope, okay. Neutrophils, this is a common name, not this is a typo, common name for the polys, that's called the polymorphonucleus, <laughs> that got 15 to 20 billion polys in the circulation. So this is the amount of neutrophils. Um, suppose if there is an infection or some inflammation, uh, the neutrophils is the first and foremost will go and fight for that infection or, or at site of inflammation. Suppose if you have some injury in the small intestine, okay, injury, the small intestinal injury you cannot see from the outside because it's happening inside. Uh, but that but you can see the, the, the infection or the inflammation in the intestine by measuring the neutrophil in the stools. So one of the uh, thing is they normally I, I get a sample of stool from these patients and then analyze on ELISA technique and then find out the neutrophil marker protein which is present in the stool and that gives enormous amount. So that forms a basis for a diagnostics in the small intestine because uh, we did my own research, one of the intestinal ulcers and uh, it, uh, it gives like an intestinal bleeding. If you take more of painkiller, like arthritis pain, uh, painkiller, you know, those, you won't see any symptoms. You are keeping, feeling good, everything is fine. All on a sudden, you get anemic and then proteinemia and then go to death within short period of time without no notice. People say heart is okay, liver is okay, uh, blood is okay, but the intestine is not okay. And then he got the uh, more of blood which is passing through the stool and, and, and that causes the death. So we did some research on that and uh, one other group from Sweden and they are good at the neutrophil marker in stools. So what we need to collect when we did our research, we had to collect the stool and then pack them up in a, in a FedEx and send to them. And, but one time what happened, the FedEx, uh, they didn't take up this one. So they delayed the thing and then the eyes gone out, gone bad and then they throw, it's a stool smells and they throw them out. So the Swedish guys and they, the scientists, they didn't receive the sample and they call our gastroenterologist and they, this, this happened in London when I was working there and, and they were asking all the question, then we asked the technician, hey, what did you do? We packed them and, and, and then uh, finally he admitted that he didn't put much of dry ice in that one. So before he, he had to, you know, take this one up into the FedEx, the company, they got, uh, got into that storage, ice, keep it in ice, but it's gone bad. So uh, the neutrophils, that mark uh, a difference in a, in a non-invasive technique that we can do it, you know. So it plays a major role. Okay. So the, uh, the back. This is uh, some of the inflammatory reaction where the pus is the one other thing with the tissues and the white cells on the neutrophils. A dead neutrophil is called as a pus. That's what we, uh, you know, we have to observe in the inflammatory region. 
In the eosinophil, these are the bilobed and these are characteristics. You can read and then you can study and all those things in your PowerPoint. Basophils, another characteristics. Non-granulocyte, leukocyte, lymphocytes. This is the one other thing where the 6 to 16 micrometer <laughs> in size and three types in small, medium, large, spherical, large. And, and these are some of the granules, gran non-granular site, but the lysosomal granules are present, scanty, but very rarely you got the RER the rough endoplasm reticulum, Golgi, and everything, okay. This non-granulocyte leukocyte, they undergoes transformed a large lymphocyte capable of mitosis. They, they, they are the one, you know, which will, uh, which will produce of, uh, of uh, you know, recognizing the antigen and producing of antibodies and everything. So, let's see. Role of lymphocytes in immune response. The two population of lymphocytes in this, T cells, and B cells, okay? T cells is a thymus derived cell. B cell is the, is the one is the bone marrow derived cells. That's called B cells. So one of the question when I was a graduate student, they asked another thing, you know, professor asked the question, do you know what is my T cell? Yes, I know what is D cell. And what is B cell? B cell is a battery cell. T cell is D cell, you know, for the car, putting the car. I said, it is not like that. It's an immune response then. <laughs> And that's the one of the things, you know, you used to remember that. What is T cell? What is B cell? Right? So you should remember B cell is uh, blood, uh, bone marrow derived cells, okay? And uh, bone marrow hematocytes, the B lymphocytes, are B cells, otherwise called B cells or B lymphocytes, everything same. My lymphoid tissue differentiated into B lymphocyte. They are the plasma cells. They convert into plasma cells. B lymphocytes convert to plasma cells, respond to antibody production. Have you studied in immunology class, in your online class about the B lymphocytes and that is responsible for the plasma cells to produce more of antibody production? Anti what is antibody? Antibody, have you read through the chapter three in the immunology probably class? The antibody is the one which will bind with the antigen. What is antigen? The antigen is a foreign protein or any other protein which is, which is not normal to recognition by the, our body. It is not self, it is non-self. So, so you, our antibody is the one, the protein which will bind to the antigen and thereby it form antigen-antibody complex and thereby destroys the pathogen. So antibody is coming from the plasma cells. That plasma cells is coming from B lymphocyte or B cells, okay. Recycled B uh, lymphocytes have a memory for the foreign antigen that's a primary immune response. So if you want to educate your body for a pathogen, for example, if you do a vaccination or immunization, you do that one. For that, you are giving a dead cells of that particular pathogen, non-virulent pathogen. In other words, the bacteria, dead bacteria, dead viral particle, which you injected into your body, then your body your B cells and everything recognized as a, as a foreign antigen, then they think, hey, it is a foreign particle. It, our body is a stupid, it's a fool. It won't recognize it's alive or dead, but it will go along like a Briley method. Hey, it is a, it touched that particular protein and then it feels it is, yeah, there is a foreign type of protein. It is not, it is unusual. It is not present in our body. Immediately it starts synthesizing its antibody. That's why we have more of antibody for a particular antigen or particular vaccine or particular uh, peptide or polypeptide or bacteria. So we have more boosting of more, more antibody in our system. And as soon as we encounter like a flu or swine flu infection getting in, this antibody will go and bind to that swine flu and then attack and then destroy it. So this is the basic principle which you know about the basic of immunization. And we have uh, covered enough in the immunology class as well. Okay. Uh, subject to familiar antigen undergo mitosis because the cells, we need number of cells, we need more cells for production of antibody. So as soon as the antigen, a foreign particle or foreign protein is there, these B cells undergo mitosis. It will recognize the antigen and then it will undergo mitosis and then it will produce more amount of plasma cells and more plasma cells meaning more antibody, okay? That's the lifetime protection to specific disease. See, this is the one people look for a vaccine for cancer. 
or vaccine for HIV or vaccine for any flu infection. We know now about the different types of mutated. So every time the flu is mutated, we have to have a shot, right? Why? Because always the flu is, the virus is mutated, okay? So one other thing is the lifetime protection specific disease. I think there is a vaccine coming from ovarian cancer. Is that right, true? Type of uh, sarcoma, uh, type of virus. So that induces the carcinoma of the ovary. So now they have got a vaccine, the clinical trial, and, and now they want to protect from that uh, infection. And that viral infection lead to cancer. That's ovarian carcinoma. So we are getting close to uh, finding a cure for cancer now with the using vaccine or DNA vaccine or gene therapy, everything. Okay. Mitosis of T cells that give rise to four types of T cells, the thymus derived cell, T cells. We have a T helper cell, supper cell T cells, cytotoxic killer T cells, and memory T cells. So all of them are involved in fighting against antigens. Type of immunity, there are two types of immunity we have studied in immunology. I, I have to cover, this is overlapping, that's the exact reason I have to teach the histology and immunology at the same oh, this one semester so that you have some sort of a overlapping so you will easily understand the principle behind it. Cell mediated immunity that destroys the cell, that is uh, and mostly on, um, uh, on carrying the antigen like antibody, uh, antigen antibody reaction. Humoral antibody mediated injury and no cell contact is required here only the antibody is combined together antigen but here there is no need to have a cell to cell contact but antibody is enough to contact the uh, antigen or uh, the bacteria or virus. Okay. And here cell mediated immunity means the cell is necessary like a phagocytosis or any other cell is necessary either producing antibody in one cell and the other uh, phagocytosis or macrophage which will which will eat the bacteria and thereby destroyed, okay, cell mediated immunity. So here the killer T cells that the cytotoxic substance. So cytotoxic substances that I, I normally call it uh, like, um, like a lytic enzymes and, and um, uh, more of proteolytic enzymes and that will, that will destroy the target cell. The killer T cells will bind to the, the, the infected cells. For example, in, um, in, um, in the uh, immunology class, I explained probably, I'm just um, explaining once again, probably that will get a clear picture. Um, suppose this is one cell, this is another cell, okay, this is another cell, this is another cell. Nucleus is there, okay. Now, there is an invader, uh, a guy, uh, another uh, uh, bacteria which is coming in or a virus getting in or some pathogen or any pathogen, the green one, it will get into the cells and then it will, it will reside there because the virus is a particle, it is not a cell, it, 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 it cannot live on its own, it needs some other cell. So what happened, the virus will use the cellular machinery and then it will produce a coat like thing. Immediately the cells will feel uncomfortable. This is not normal. The, somebody is invaded into my territory and then I need to inform the others. What this will do, it will produce a type of protein and then sticking outside the cell. When compared to these cells, and these cells are now raising their voice as a SOS, save my, save our souls, like that, yeah, some sort of a some communication, okay. I am bit danger. Somebody is getting into my house. Nine one one call. Everything is going on here. So this one will be recognized by killer T cells. The killer T cells will be roaming around. Suppose these are blood, and then you know all these cells is going around. Then as soon as here it comes out, it won't recognize. As soon as these cells will come here, it binds here. Okay. Hey, here I got the call. So the police will bind here, and then immediately the killer T cells they have got what the lysis as a as a bomb, like a hand grenade, destroy this whole cell. So these cells will destroy by these killer T cells, and thereby it prevents the infection of the cells to the neighboring cells. Follow? It executes our own cells follow but the mechanism is simple but 
it the the complication is what is the what's going on inside and what is type of signals and everything is an interesting topic in immunology if you gone through the MHC molecules and other things that's uh, I have to take a one entire class for that but that's why the course the immunology you, you can we will study there if you have an online and you can listen to it the lectures video lectures you will understand more how this is happening here there just I want to highlight that part okay now back to this uh, body rejection of organ transplants the tissue skin graft the cell mediate again the killer T cells the same principle which I explained to you earlier so suppose if you are cells you are uh, liver cell this is your liver cell okay this is a liver cell then all in a sudden if you are bringing this liver cell is being damaged and then you are supplement with the, the another tissue this is this is the foreign this is another donor the green one is a donor so what will happen this this neighboring cell will feel uncom uncomfortable this is not belonging to me somebody else hey I am human being and this is a pig how come a pig <laughs> cell can accomplish you know I, I hate pig I don't want pig now into my cell so these cells will will react so it will produce a type of compounds and that will inform the killer T cells and killer T cells will come and then it will reject it will it will eliminate this one and thereby the rejection of these cells so that's why you know you have to have some sort of histocompatibility and to reduce the body of rejection we have to immunocompromise drugs for that and thereby prevent the rejection of the body so this will discuss in transplantation immunology that's another topic, another lecture in, in our lecture two of immunology course. So the the uh, underlying point, you know, here is the blood. We are talking the connective tissue three, and it gives a protection against the infection, and it also gives a protection against uh, any other cell invasion, like a uh, transplantation or tissue or organ tra organ transplantation. The same thing will go through for uh, for the cancer cells too. Suppose if these are the uh, cells uh, which are present in um, you know in the body, like a like a ovary, ovarian cancer. All in a sudden, one cell in this cancer become mutated. This is not an infection, mind it. This is not an infection, no infection at all, and no transplantation. But all in a sudden, one particular cell become mutated. This is unusual. So if this cell is mutated, and the neighboring cells will feel the behavior of the cell is bad, because it won't keep its territory. As soon as its behavior change, what will happen? It, the the membrane protein, which is the surface of the cell surface, will become behave awkward and thereby it, it, uh, it disconnect the communication between the neighboring cells. Then these cells will feel, oh, there's something is going on here and, and then this uh, mutation will lead to multiplication of the or mitosis here. So one cell become a two cell and two become a four cells and all on its own. These are something like I wonder here in Houston we have the Houston, Houston is a big city right but but the city of Houston inside the city of Houston there another city is there you know what is that no Bel Air have you heard of Bel Air Bel Air is present inside the Houston but it is its own what whatever things going on is the inside but but it's full of Houston area so there's a city inside a city. Like that, if you have a s tissue cells <coughs> surrounded by a general cell, mass of cells, all in a sudden an individual is coming up here. Uh, a cell is mutated and they get the mitosis and that is a tumor cell. And the killer T cell will recognize it and then it can kill the ability. That's what we call it as a natural killer cell which will, which will destroy the cancer cells. So another cancer therapy they used to do it. Okay. So we can, we can use this connective tissue as the blood as the white cells as uh, we can uh, either make a new tissue or destroy or we can synthesize a new type of organ or tissues so it is interesting that's what I, I like this uh, 
connective tissue and the connective tissue, the group of white cell itself form uh, a big class as, a, as an immunology, like a defensive, like a protection, right? So the system. So you have to remember this, this is very important. On the primary immune response, lymphocytes as well as the memory cells, that is also is coming from, um, uh, from the B lymphocytes um, and all the secondary immune response, this is again recognition, okay, of the antigen. Monocytes, that's the egg granular, and the different size. Platelets, again, that's I explained to you before, that's for the uh, thromboplastin and prothrombin and the cell clot and fibrinogen, fibrin and all of them is done by platelets. And the deficiency of platelets that leads to thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia means you don't have very many platelets. And one of the disease they call the royal disease, have you ever heard of hemophilia? If there is an injury, there is no blood clot, that person bleed to death. Right, unless otherwise something is being measured. So, one of our royal family in British, they have got the, they suffer from hemophilia. You know, what is the genetic lineage on that one? Anyone? Have you studied before some genetics on that? The royal family, the royal disease, they used to call it hemophilia. Right? Russians and they, they, they trace back through hemophilia. That's one of the popular Russian family and then go on to the British family, everything, right? They found out all those details. That's another thing, hemophilia. Lymph, so again, the protein rich, uh, clear liquid and small lymphocytes and heavy metal. Heavy, uh, if you have a heavy meals and chylomicron are present in the lymph. So that's another diagnostic feature of uh, whether you eat or not, okay? Lymph capillaries transfer lymph from connective tissue to lymph node where lymphocytes have been added to it. So, which I explained in the beginning of the class, how the lymph node is swelling during the infections. So, this is the part as a finishing of your class for this. I want to go through the figures, which is interesting. Um, these are some other things, you know, pictures in your blackboard, which I've given. So, you can have a blood exposed to air, clots, trapped. So, you get the polycythemia, normal and anemia. So, you, you, these are some of the diagnostic features. Erythrocytes of blood, how you can see the donuts. Now, you can see the, the how the blood RBC is traveling in the, into the artery, uh, uh, I, mean, I mean in the artery uh, or in the capillaries. You know, the it can squeeze and then getting in to travel. But these are the sickle cell anemia, how the uh, 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 RBC looks like in a sickle cell instead of this. And these are the some of the span how they are organizing the arrangement of RBC. Okay, this is one uh, RBC. These are some other white cells. How the white cells is migrating is a, as a amoeba, uh, like a amoeboid movement. You, know, you can see that, you know, you can see from, from the blood, you know, capillary into the tissues, uh, ca uh, junctions, tissues junctions and it will evade and it coming out for a migration of leukocytes, okay. This moment. These are some other things which we discussed with the different shapes and everything and, and the characteristic of the white cells. Um, it's all different types of white blood cells or the leukocytes. Do you have um, any questions so far? You can go through all, all those, uh, these, the figures. Sometimes I will give you figures this and then I will ask you to uh, draw or uh, give comments over it and you have to write the comments. So that is another part that you have to do it. Okay. And also I want to do some of the flash movies which I've given all in, in the, uh, in your um, blackboard. You can see, ch check and how this is being organized very well. Because I'm not going through individually. You can, you can study that. And then a path of blood in a flash movie. See that one here. I think probably you might have studied all this animation, how this blood. This is an interesting one. If you don't understand clearly what I am talking, you can also watch this animation that will give you enough information. Okay. And then uh, if you have a vaccination or T cell function. Oh, there 
look at that real media. There are a number of types of T cells involved in specific immunity. T cells recognize their specific foreign protein or antigen only when it is presented on the surface of a body cell. One type of T cell is the cytotoxic or killer T cell. Its role is to destroy infected or cancerous body cells. In this case, a pathogen enters the cell on the left and that cell moves foreign protein to its surface. A patrolling killer T cell recognizes and binds to that protein and releases perforin, a protein that ruptures the membrane of the infected cell. A second type of T cell is the helper T cell. One of the roles of a helper T cell is to activate B cells. At the top of the screen, a phagocytic white blood cell is presenting antigen from a pathogen it has engulfed. The B cell that responds has antibodies for the same antigen that activates the helper T cell. The T cell sends out chemical signals that affect various immune cells. Okay, another one, phagocytic cells. Phagocytic cells are specialized to non-specifically consume and digest antigens. The macrophage is an example of a phagocytic cell. In addition to this non-specific cleanup function, macrophages digest engulfed antigens and place small antigenic pieces on their surface for presentation to lymphocytes. Okay, getting on to the fever. Fever is a non-specific immune response to infection. Bacteria entering the body through a cut may cause an infection. Upon recognition of the bacterial invasion, lymphocytes release pyrogens that signal the brain to raise body temperature. An elevated body temperature creates an unfavorable environment for microbial growth. A fever also enhances the normal immune response. These so are how the T cells that produces more of uh, the cytokines and the clonal expansion. In order to determine blood type, we will visually centrifuge these blood samples to separate the blood components. The ABO blood group is based on the presence or absence of two major proteins in red blood cell membranes, a glutenogen A and a glutenogen B. A person can have A, B, A and B, or neither A nor B in his or her blood cell membrane. These blood types are referred to as A, B, AB, and O. If a person has type A blood, his or her blood will contain antibodies against agglutinogen B. These antibodies are called agglutinins. Conversely, a type B person will have agglutinins <coughs> against agglutinogen A. Blood compatibility can be predicted by understanding the differences between the donor and recipient blood types. The donor's blood generally only contains red blood cells with no plasma. Therefore, it is agglutinins in the recipient's blood plasma that determine if the donor's blood will be compatible. <coughs> For these reasons, type O is known as the universal donor, while type AB is known as the universal recipient. Okay. So have you gone through these animations on all the lectures? Before, so I, I would like to go through this one. That will help you to understand it quite a bit. But you read your, your PowerPoints and your practice quizzes, practice, and then lecture notes class, what we discuss here, 
So when I ask you to write the homework, some students they ask what we discuss and, and one or few lines. Now I expect both you summarize the PowerPoints plus what we discuss in the class both together as a homework and then submit on to the Blackboard. Okay. And uh, if Dr. you have Soma? any questions, yes, you can ask me. Yes. Go I ahead. have a question. Yes. Um, what figures um, are we supposed to know from this chapter? Is it all of them or like specific ones for the test? For the test? Oh. Yeah, or just for like reviewing. Which figures specifically do we need to know? No, the, the figures, the list of figures I'll give you at the time of exam. Okay. What type of figures do you have to study that? Okay. Oh, I'll give that thank, figure thank you. and then you are going to...